My name is Reva and I'm an ecologist with Savanta and we're just here today at a burnt down barn. So we're going to be talking about snake hibernaculus and where snakes like to overwinter during uh, fall and winter months. So basically, generally, there will be a lot of junk lying around and this basically creates cover for snakes. So snakes will be able to tunnel inside and under. What's important for overwintering habitat for snakes is it has to be below the frost line. So you want an area that is dry and well drained, but not too dry because snakes still need to uh, retain moisture during during the winter months so they don't dry out. And you need to have enough cover so that when the spring, when they do emerge, they can hide, they can bask at their own pace, and they have food readily available. So snakes especially like these uh, stone foundations, basements, uh, old barns, older houses with uh, basically stone walls. They're able to use all the, the lines and nooks in the crannies to basically find food and shelter. And usually uh, in the winter, some landowners might find milk snakes or black rat snakes in their basement because that's where they're warm, that's where there's food available, and uh, that's where they can safely rest for <laughs> six months. If you do find a snake in your house, first of all, you should remember not to be afraid because only one species of snake in Ontario is venomous, and that's the Massasauga. They usually live around the Bruce Peninsula and Georgian Bay. They're not found farther south where there's larger cities. But if you do find a snake, uh, if you like snakes, you can just leave them. If you feel that you would rather not have snakes in your house, there you have a couple of options. First of all, the reason snakes are able to get in your house is that there is a leak somewhere or, or a hole that makes access easy for them. So what you need to do is find every hole in your house, which may be difficult, and block them. And you should also try to provide an alternate hibernation site for the snakes so that after you've blocked all the holes, they will still have somewhere to go to survive the winter. So what you can do is you can build an artificial snake hibernacula. So that's basically a two meter deep hole in the ground where uh, you can place cinder blocks, pieces of wood, PVC pipe, that basically allows the snake to crawl inside below the frost line and still above the water table and create these little chambers that are that are stable and and ideal for them to basically go into their torpor state for the rest of the winter and then uh, allow them to emerge in the spring with enough cover and enough uh, basking sites so that they'll be able to just leave and find their own foraging ways. And snakes usually will come back to the same hibernacula, hibernacula site every year. So once you've blocked off your, your basement, it's important to basically observe where the snakes have been going, if they're using your hibernacula site, and if they aren't, you can uh, contact your local conservation authority or uh, conservation NGO and ask them for assistance. Uh, we don't recommend that you transport the snakes more than a kilometer from your house. Because, uh, snakes are highly location-based, so if you move them too far from their home habitat, they, they won't have enough time to establish a new habitat, find a new breeding grounds, foraging grounds, and hibernation sites uh, to survive the winter. So we recommend that you move them only around 200 meters or so to, a, to an alternate site or just basically away from your, your house, your lawn, and anywhere that you feel uh, is, you're exposed to snakes. So snakes will emerge from hibernation in late April once the temperatures start warming up and, they, and the air temperature reaches down below in their hibernation site. They'll start emerging, they'll hang around for the first two weeks around their hibernation sites just to bask and gather some energy. And then around uh, May, June, July, uh, they'll be off in the, the fields foraging for, for mice and for frogs, insects. So they won't be around houses as much in, uh, in, the, in the real summer months. But uh, starting in late August and September, they'll start moving back to hibernation sites. For example, um, old houses, burnt town barns, anything with a stone foundation. And they'll just stay there to gather more energy and forage for, for juicy mice. And basically, they just want to stay near the hibernation site. So in case uh, some nights, if the temperature drops below zero, they'll be able to just pop right into their, their overwintering site and just wait it out. So one way to find out if snakes are on your property are to use uh, artificial cover boards. And what that is is sheets of metal, carpet, or wood that basically attract snakes to them. So this basically creates a little island of habitat that a snake can use to, to bask under, to bask on top 
uh, usually rodents will start to nest underneath and that provides uh, prey for snakes to go and find. It's usually somewhat moist under a coverboard and that allows snakes to go and shed their skin, which is another way you can tell just what species is using them. So, so at Savanta we use coverboards uh, in our reptile surveys and they're good for salamanders, snakes, frogs, newts. So they're, they're a very versatile multi-use tool. And uh, if, I don't know if you want to take a look. Yeah. So what you can see is all the little rodents, all the decay. Basically this was all grass before, but after you put a cover board on, all the vegetation starts to die and the snakes like it when there's bare, bare ground. And the reason why cover boards are so successful is that a lot of snake species don't like to bask in the open. Mostly you'll find garter snakes out basking on top of rocks, but other snakes like milk snakes, uh, red belly snakes, uh, decays brown, they prefer cover. So this allows basically them to hide and gain energy at the same time to hunt for their food. And cover boards are very cheap and they're just basically unwanted pieces of, of plywood or uh, sheet metal. So they're very accessible and if you want to try to have your own cover board study on your property, it's very easy to just toss one down and wait over, over the winter for it to establish itself. Usually cover boards uh, are more successful uh, after many years. So this cover board has been here for three summers now. And uh, we find a lot of snakes like uh, milk snakes and decays brown snakes as I've said before. And uh, basically they'll utilize this habitat by their hibernacula. So they'll be under this cover board in around October or late September. So, so one of the many hazards snakes face when they leave their hibernacula sites and come back to them is that a lot of the time they have to cross roads. So snakes' first instinct when they see an oncoming car is to freeze and try to camouflage themselves in. So that's not ideal when you have a vehicle coming at you. So a lot of them get run over on the roads. And uh, basically this impacts their population as it takes uh, a few years for a snake to mature enough to lay eggs. So once you take an adult snake out of the population, you have to wait another five, 10 years for it to be replaced. Now this road, uh, a recent study was done by the Ontario Road Ecology Group and they found a hot spot just of snake mortalities around this area. And what we now understand is it's because uh, the hibernacula site that was just shown was, uh, was down further in the Delano driveway. So what they understand is that snakes were getting hit mostly moving to and from their hibernacula site. And what we can do now is basically put up reptile fencing, put up culverts to assist snakes so they don't get hit on the roads, they don't have to go over, they can go under.